Welcome back to the Tutor Money Super 1 British Karting Championships. It's the IAMI Cadet Class up next, the official MSA British Championship for Cadets. The winner last time out at BF International with a great move in the final complex was the O-Play. It was Freddie Slater and I spoke to him earlier. Freddie, great start to the championship for you. Just talk us through that last lap move at BF International though. He looked behind once and twice and then he missed the curb and I just hit the curb and got the got the outside and then she just went up the inside and then he tried to come up me but I said no and then that was a race win. Yeah, there was no getting past you once you got past, was there? Uh, tell us a little bit about your brother. You've got an eight-year-old brother, I think, starting MSA racing as well. Yeah, my brother Alfie, he's, he did the first round of BKC um, and now he's eight, so soon we're going to do the second round of BKC but now we're going to go to Forest Edge and um, we're all going to do practice and we're going to do some racing against all the good drivers out there. We're talking to brothers, little baby brother on the way as well, I think. Your mum at home? Yeah, why, am I, why I'm racing at Forest Edge, my mum's like that at home, um, which will be quite worrying, but it should be all right. OK, and uh, this year, you're only nine years of age. Now, you could do cadets for another 10, 11, 12. You could do it for this year and another three years if you wanted to. Now, so you've got plenty of time to win this championship. I know you want to win it this year and try and do what Oliver Rowland did and win it twice in a row. Obviously, you can do that, but who's going to be the biggest challenge? Who's going to provide you with the biggest challenges this year? Well, I've got Will McIntyre, which is a good driver, and he does a lot of things that can make him win races. Ivan Limblad's one of those people. Uh, Luke Watts sometimes when the cold comes and he's pretty quick. Um, not really anyone else, really. Arvid Limblad and Maxwell Dodds, who's right there with you. We can beat Maxwell Dodds, but I think it's going to be a tough one between me and Arvid, which will be a good race. So. OK. Well, I tip Maxwell Dodds, you know that, don't you, for the championship. But uh, let's see how you get on this weekend. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. The Maxwell Dodds motivation speech from Freddie Slater right there. This incident caused a red flag. We'll have another look at it. It was pretty horrendous, I have to say. The track limit being the barrier, the concrete in play as the track. No white line at the edge of the tarmac. That's Bart Harrison going in on 77. Watch Monday Canini Jr.'s head. Oh, how does he get away with that? Unbelievable. And here Robinson, he's involved in the incident as well on the 50. Car up in the air, just carries on like nothing happened. This is the restart after the red flag, but Jake... Did we dodge a bullet there? Monde Canini Jr. lucky to get away with that one. And if that doesn't encourage someone to get the paint out and paint a white line as the track limit on the edge of the tarmac for the next MSA event, then nothing will. It's 2018, the track limit surely cannot be a barrier. I quite agree, Alan. This isn't Monte Carlo, it's Wilton Mill. Away we go, cracking start, and we are away and racing. That is on board with Ella Stevens, the reigning Birolart cadet champion. It's all getting a little bit hectic to our left. I think I saw two or three carts banging wheels in front of us. That is the nine cart. No problem at all for Sam Shaw as he goes up towards Christmas for the first time. And there's already a little bit of a tussle there with the two and the three. How about that? And running oh, out of road. Oh, what's nerfs? The two off. That's Arvid Limblad. I think we'll have another look at that. We're going to need to because that is not particularly clear from the go. outset. Now, Lindblad, Watts on the outside, a little bit of contact between them. Watts ends up on the grass. Now, bear in mind, it's been drizzling. So, as soon as he's on the grass now, now he's got moisture on yeah, his Yeah, he's tires. got nowhere to go but he into just, him. Yeah, that's not deliberate. That's definitely not Luke Watts' fault. You look at that and think, that's payback for you putting me on the grass. No, indeed. If you ask me, no, that's, no, that's a racing not. incident. That's no, a racing incident because Watts... Because of the water on his tyres, basically, he's just sliding wide into Lindblad. Lindblad's come off worse, but Watts also send it, ended up on the grass. Oh, and another spin! Oh, my, oh goodness, my goodness, this is getting out of hand now. Gabriel Stilp out of the cart at the final turn, hits the barrier, gets himself right off the circuit. And who was that caught out the, in it as well? The 50 spun out as well, Jake. That's the second time Have he's been involved in that. Eddie Robinson, look at this. Oh, th this is silly. This is getting silly now. Well, he was so lucky. He did exactly the right thing. He, when he realised he could get up, ran out to the side of the circuit. So uh, that is all no fine and dandy. Flag. He's carrying on because he's, he's up and over the bow, so they know he's OK. 
So the race is carrying on, but and another the, huge incident. And in the, the marshals, final turn. the marshals have got the cart off the racing line as well. So well done to the marshals to get the cart off the racing line. Gabriel Stilt again, a very near miss. But uh, Eddie Robinson, that's twice now he's been uh, very near misses in Sam the same Shaw, place. Sam Shaw up the inside for a spot. Nice move by Sam, the winner of the Super One Virtual Kart Sim Championship on Wednesday. Here at Welter Mill, of course, it's held every Wednesday, the Karts in Championship. As we see William McIntyre, the eighth plate, the uh, Woven Sands driver. That's Luke Watts up the inside for third place. He's recovered. Oh, and Shaw's Watts tangled! Sands. Shaw's tangled and Shaw's gone. That is the virtual championship leader taking away from the 21, Charlie Rippin. They both got involved in that one. So here's the move on Rippin. That's perfectly fine. The way is clear for Aiden Neat to go through and follow Watts. That's a perfectly good move. Rippin's gone wide. Uh, the virtual series champion, and uh, championship leader, I should say. Shaw goes for the move as well. They just tangle wheels. Nothing malicious about that at all. There's just not enough space for both of them to be. It is a racing incident. Nothing Charlie Rippin did. He wasn't deliberate, but unfortunately, Sam was taking advantage of them, of him running running wide and then as uh, Ripping got, came back from the concrete onto the tarmac, a little bit of contact, his wheel got caught up and has run over the top of him at those two out and down the field. We're on board here with uh, Ellis Stevens. that's Oliver Wright, the Sherburne man in front as he come up into Christmas corner, the right-hander, move being made in front, that's another place mate, being made up, nice clean move there. Yeah, that is Pineapple in front of us, don't call him Oliver Wright, He's, his nickname is Pineapple, that's what everybody knows him as, you can see it there on the suit, that's why I was banging on last time at BF International about the Gladiator and the Pineapple, because they've got uh, quite a few nicknames up and down the grid, of course Kai Bacini, as we know now, is known as the Boxer. Yeah, that's because of his uh, chroma key image that uh, we recorded at BF International came out doing a bit a few boxing moves which won him the chroma key uh, trophy that <laughs> You're going to need to make. You're going to need to make a trophy about that. Trophy. Anyway, McIntyre, McIntyre in the lead, but how for how much longer? Because Freddie Slater is already sizing up a move. The O plate. He wants to try and find a way through as soon as possible. Max Dodds in third position. So as far as Freddie Slater is concerned, job done at the moment. Luke Watts in fourth place. Aidan Neat. Leo Robinson, the leading rookie. Great run from him up six places. Max Hall, the gladiator, likewise. And then we've that's, got Harry Junior Burgoyne. And that's Freddie Senior Slater going through to the lead at the side of uh, McIntyre so these two well clear though aren't they of the uh, in Maxwell Dodds in third place uh, I did say uh, Watts was up to third I think earlier he's actually up to fourth so uh, big lead these two have uh, over Maxwell Dodds and the problem Dodds has got there he is no in man's the background man. yeah exactly he's working on his own he's, he's Billy no mates well it's getting very very feisty further back as we've still got an incredible battle in the mid pack Watts in fourth, Neat in fifth, and then we've got the likes of Robinson Hall, Burgoyne Jr. and Baxter Davies having a great scrap. Brandon Carr leads the charge as Arvid Lindblad is fighting back to 11th now. Vinnie Phillips, Ashton Hodgson, Oliver Wright and Ella Stevens. Great run this from Ella Stevens. This is her first time in the National Championship campaign. She's a Birol Art Cadet champion, which is not the same level. It's still a National Championship, let's not forget that. But obviously the British Championships, there is already a tiny bit more land to it in some people's eyes. I do commentate for both championships and I love the Birol Art. I do love the Super 1 as well, but it's great to see Ella Stevens being a champion in one championship, coming into Super 1 and proving that that talent is genuine. Yeah, Birol Art, the, uh, is that the new Super 1 feeder series, Jay? Not sure about that. You keep your opinions to yourself, mate. I'm wearing my Birol Art top with pride every weekend, <laughs> I know. To be fair, there have been a few drivers come out of it. Um, who was it? Oliver... Oliver Gray. Gray, yeah, is another one. Champion there, a very talented driver here as well. Out in front, we've got Slater and McIntyre battling away for position. McIntyre on the tail of Slater, but these two doing exactly what they set up to do in this race. Work together, get the gap, and then with two laps to go, you can do whatever you like, boys. It's up to you. That's the thing with racing. They're in the same team, but this is not like Formula One or IndyCar or Lamar or anything like that. Team orders do not exist. You've got a game plan within the team. If you manage to get yourself up to the front, you can stretch away from the rest of the field and leave these guys like Dodds, Watts, Neaton, Robinson on your own. That's absolutely fine. You can plow out in front and then with two laps to go, do what you like. If you hit each other, it's your fault. We should mention Aiden Neat, Jake. This is the in fifth place there. This is the best performance we've seen from Aiden. His dad, a former British touring car driver, of course, gave up driving in British touring cars because he wanted to concentrate on his son. He got a load of stick for some reason 
for doing that online. I didn't understand it at the time. Mm. I thought it was the right decision. Absolutely. To make. And, and I'll tell you what, if you went and asked his dad, are you enjoying did you enjoy driving yourself in British touring cars or watching your son drive? I'm pretty sure he would say, I much prefer watching my son compete. Yeah, of course, and Andy Neese, of course, is one of those people who's already had a few near misses in the past. Don't forget, he broke his neck in a massive accident in the uh, Brick Car 24 Hours at Silverstone about 11 years ago. So he's already been to the top of the brink and fallen off the side of the cliff and come back. So I think uh, watching Aiden do as good as he is doing in the top six, he'll be absolutely blissful watching his boy at work, particularly considering that, you know, he's been in the Fusion team for a couple of seasons now he is now one of the front guard men we'll see him competing for that podium several times this season in fact look he's even left leo robinson rookie and teammate uh, well behind as the 33 moves aside and just uh, no problems at all for jacob baldry just letting them through they've obviously all got to learn at their own speed the rookie's doing a fine job this year we've got quite a few of them actually in the rookies race for those interested leo robinson currently leads the way as we look at ashton hodgson's details started p26 he finds himself up to p30 13 now he's exactly gone through half the field great work there but Robinson is elite rookie then it's Alvin Baxter Davies from Brandon Carr who did so well out in the American Nationals at SK USA recently uh, then we have uh, Ella Stevens the fourth rookie Archie Clark and the boxer Kai Bacini in front of Heidi Hamamasi the Canadian and Jack Younger so great to see the, the rookies there's plenty of them in that top 20 and that is the leading rookie Leo Robinson the rookies by the way guys if you look left of your screen the blue and white, the white numbers on a blue background denote all of the rookies. So Robinson just going through the line there is the leading rookie. Baxter Davis second in that race and Brandon Carr third. And these rookies, are, don't forget, they're competing for the trophies. The top three get a trophy for finishing in the top three. But if you're a rookie, you're basically racing against the other rookies. So you do take away a winner's trophy for winning that race. If you also win the race outright, you'll end up with two trophies. And if you're a privateer, you'll end up with three trophies. <laughs> so it's uh, all doable. It's you all can't very say doable. John Hoyle doesn't put on uh, a decent number of trophies for all the guys, particularly those that come to the championship new to it. As Watts the goes inside. up the inside of Dodds for well, third place. That's a very patient drive from Luke Watts to close in and chip away on Max Dodds as much as he possibly has. And he's been able to get himself into a strong position as we watch the midfielders. There's Ella Stevens on the 28, battling away with the likes of Archie Clark, a very talented young racer, Archie Clark, one of the uh, new boys in the Fusion camp. And he is the current uh, new holder of the Downforce UK Under 13 Racer of the Year Award, which is uh, in uh, tribute to a, a young Scottish racer who uh, sadly was, uh, passed away in an accident when he was defending his uh, stock car racing championship, young Keir Miller, a lovely trophy that is given out every year. And Archie Clark was the recipient of that for his dominant Bambino campaign last year. He's come up to Super 1 and he is already an amazing young talent. Look at that, 16th in the race here at Wilton Mill amongst drivers who have got a lot more experience. Yeah, his granddad was, uh, he was all right when he was granddad. <laughs> yeah, uh, you could call Roger Clark all right if you want. I'd call him a living legend, actually. Absolutely. Roger Clark, one of the greatest rally drivers in history. These two continuing to stretch out their lead in front, but look, Freddie Slater just seems to have the edge over Will McIntyre. And as a result of these two being so consistent at PF, so consistent here, it's these two that are going to leave this particular round of the championship with the title advantage. Yeah, if it stays like this in position, now the, if you watch the championship points, top left of your screen, they will change as the track positions change at the end of each lap. It's a fantastic system we've got here. Uh, run by Ian Rogers look, for Tag look Hoyer. Back, look at the gap. Now, Dodds has got to work with Watts here, surely, in the battle for third position. They've They're got to try and... The leaders. No, They're not with a minute. Behind, Jake. If there were six and a half minutes to go, I would say you've got a great chance. A minute and a half to go. I'm sorry, time has run out. There's nothing you can do about that. Also, Leo Robinson has made the move over to fifth place. He's got past Aidan Neat. Yeah, just talking about the Tag Hoyer system here, that we use the timing system, run by Ian Rogers, who does such a fantastic job for Super 1, has been doing it for years, always turns up, always on time, whatever problems there are, he sorts them out. It's a great system and this virtual championship that we have top left of your screen, literally, that's something that uh, was developed with the system so that as the drivers go through the line at the end of each lap, those championship points will up 
update as they change positions they'll update so if if McIntyre gets in the lead at the moment he's on 368 Slater on 387 Slater leading if McIntyre gets by him watch those points change well, live well I think they might change because Dodds is giving a lot of pressure to Watts I think he's realized looking at how much time there is to go that he's not going to get there look at this squabble further back as we've got Max Hall the gladiator rolling up his sleeves and going for overtakes I think he managed to get past Aiden Neat there and we'll have to double check it but now this is game time and Freddie Slater knows it two laps to go look at Will McIntyre trying to sell Slater the dummy there into Christmas Slater was ready for that it was a great effort by Will McIntyre there as you say Jake that was right out of mother care he's trying to do it again here we go, and they, this is it. This is exactly He's what we're talking him. about. Slater's been lang out to try on the far side. McIntyre through. Beautifully done into Ashby, and McIntyre gets past Freddie Slater. Now that is going to drop Slater's points tally a little bit, but he's still going to be in front of McIntyre if they finish in these positions. Yeah, Slater will go down to 385. Watch when they go across the line. Slater should go to 385. McIntyre should go to 370. Well, Burgoyne Jr. is now up to sixth place in front of Neat. Max Hall is in there as well. Then we've got Lindblad up to ninth place. So a great fight back from Lindblad. Back to the Davies, 10th position. Last lap, and I think McIntyre has got it won with Freddie Slater. I'm not sure he was expecting that kind of comeback at Ashby. And there you go. Sure enough, virtual championship points have changed. Live on the fly. Slater now with a 15-point championship lead over McIntyre if it stays like this. And it looks like it's going to. Fastest lap of the race from Arvid Lindblad in his fight back. Behind Lindblad in eighth place, we have Max Hall, Alfie Baxter Davies, Brandon Carr, Vinnie Phillips, Oliver Wright doing a good job there in 13th, making up six places. Ashton Hodgson made up 12 to 14. Archie Clark has got the move done on Ellis Stevens and Kai Bacini, the other rookie in there as well, doing a fine job. But Will McIntyre has done what he needed to do, showed a clean pair of heels to Freddie Slater, got the move done on Ashby, made sure Slater had no retaliation. And even though he's caught him on the last lap, the checkered flag flies. It's Will McIntyre, two arms in the air. I'm not sure you really meant to do that, but fair play. And he deserves that moment. What's in third place from Max Dodds? Leo Robertson, the lead rookie in fifth position. Great run. Aiden Neat has been beaten on the last couple of laps. Arvid Lindblad has got through. Oh, this is Ella Stevens making up a place on Archie Clark. And oh, a little bit Bacini, of a moment there. Bacini gone in the final corner. No, oh, Bacini has gone and spun around, so it's uh, right to the death. And Kai Bacini, the boxer, not happy about that one. McIntyre takes the win. Slater from Watts. Max Dodds in fourth place from Leo Robinson. Lindblad, Max Hall, Aidan Neat, and then Harry Burgoyne Jr. and Alfie Baxter Davies rounding out the top ten. Ella Stevens with a penalty for that, Jake, as well. What a shame after a great run. William McIntyre, your first win in Super 1, just try and put that into words for us. How, how does it feel crossing the line winning Super 1? It feels really great. I mean, I, never, I came into this weekend thinking just get the points for the championship, not thinking winning. And yeah, we end up getting up to the win. It just feels so good. I, mean, I imagine you've thought of this moment a lot. Uh, did it live up to expectations? Um, no, not really. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Thought, I just thought when I just started, I was like, right, this is just for fun, and then it got serious, and we just had so much fun doing it, and we now have even more fun with this trophy, so yes, it's brilliant. And you and Freddie played good tactics, really, waited to the end, and talk us through the move where you got the lead, do you know? Well, I just really saw Fred go into the corner, and I've seen him try and do it a lot of times, and I just decided to get the switch back and leave him with no space and just get the good exit and yeah then I just got the gap which was brilliant Lots of people to thank I imagine try and thank as many as you can for us All right, I would like to thank Fusion Motorsport a lot of my mechanic Reese Wade for the spanners being great all weekend power, shocks, engines Dan and Neil for the data making me improve in everything um, just really so, thank you so much everyone, thank you, my mum, dad my sister, I forgot them and my big brother who just came to support the final. My friends Thomas for coming, supporting me. Thank you everyone. The championship points look like this. Slater is 15 clear of McIntyre, four more over Lindblad and three more over Dodds. Aidan Neat leading the charge to catch them. Mini X30 is next.